Breaking down the debate, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump on their economic plans. Chris Cram here, Augusta Free Press. One thing you hear from supposed independent voters, if you watch the uh, cable news, and you shouldn't, I do, I leave it on, I'm a news person, I kind of have to, during the day and into the evening, you hear from these supposed independent voters who complain that all they want to do is hear more from the candidates on the issues. <laughs> they, they really don't. We hear from the, these folks on the issues quite enough, but let's just go into it here. We heard plenty from Kamala Harris and Donald Trump on the issues in the ABC News debate a couple of nights ago. And what we're going to do here at AFP over the next several days, uh, given that Donald Trump said today he's not going to debate anymore. Uh, we have plenty of time to do this, I guess, because we won't have any more <laughs> any more content to add to this, I guess. Uh, we're going to we're going to build a sort of voter guide by looking at things issue by issue. And we're going to start today with the economy. So what will Kamala Harris and Donald Trump do to build on the economy we have now? Let's start with a Kamala Harris plan. I'll call it bottom up. Um, and just to signpost here, to use a debate term from my high school debating days, uh, I'll, I'll tell you that the Donald Trump plan is top down. And hey, you may like top down. You may prefer bottom up. Let's just see. Uh, Harris at this week's debate talked up two main things, an expansion of the child tax credit and expansion of the tax deduction for people starting new small businesses. Uh, what she had to say about the child tax credit, I intend on, on extending a tax cut for uh, those families of up to $6,000, uh, of $6,000, I should say, which is the largest child tax, tax credit that we've given in a long time, so that these young families can afford to buy a crib, buy a car seat, buy cl uh, clothes for their children. Basically, uh, for newborn babies for the first year, a $6,000 tax credit for those families, then $3,600 a year for children thereafter. Uh, the current system... Uh, which is expiring in 2025 because of a Republican vote uh, in the um, Congress, uh, in, in fact, in the Senate last month, uh, would revert back in 2025 to $1,000 a month for everybody, uh, for all kids. Uh, on the small business thing, um, $50,000 tax deduction to start up small businesses, uh, she said, quote, knowing that they are the backbone of the American economy. Uh, so the that part of things uh, on average uh, according to the small business administration it costs forty thousand dollars to start a new small business and so this fifty thousand dollar tax deduction it's not a handout it's a tax deduction so it's not like a check here's fifty thousand dollars go start your small business because then everybody would be applying for that you still got to show the gumption the ability to get the business off the ground you get through the first year you file your taxes you get a forty thousand uh, dollar fifty excuse me a fifty thousand dollar deduction um that will you know, at least make up for your investment into your small business. And why this is important, there are $33 million, uh, excuse me, 33 million small businesses in the United States. Augusta Free Press is one of them. Uh, and those 33 million small businesses account for roughly 46% of all uh, private sector jobs. So it's not just my, for Augusta Free Press, for example, not just my full-time job, not just another full-time job in the case of my wife. We actually have a third employee full-time outside of our family, uh, a third reporter full time, and we have a number of small uh, of um, freelancers uh, who earn uh, anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars a month writing for us. So uh, that's extra income for them on top of what they make elsewhere. But uh, I mean, that's, that's just to illustrate to you uh, how um, you know small business isn't just and, and not not that it's a bad thing, but if it's just one person working in a small business, they've created a job for themselves. That's why. You know, the Kamala Harris plan thinks it's important. Kamala Harris thinks it's important uh, to to help these these folks out. Now, the Donald Trump plan is top down, uh, top down because the emphasis is on tax cuts for billionaires. Uh, and that's true. That's not hyperbole. That's true. Uh, and the way he pays for those tax cuts for billionaires, at least the way he claims to pay for them, is through the imposition of tariffs. So. Uh, these these tariffs uh, he put in place back in 2018 after the 2017 tax cut for billionaires, which cost $150 billion a year, uh, dwarfing the costs of every other tax cut that you can possibly have. Uh, his quote from the debate, we're doing tariffs in other countries. Other countries are going to finally, after 75 years, pay us back for all that they've all that we've done for the world. So that's what he says. He says that tariffs will pay us back for all that we've done. Um the analysis is, yeah, uh, Trump imposed tariffs, uh, a new round of tariffs, including um, rather significant tariffs on China in 2018, and it didn't work. Even to, an, according to a conservative think tank, American Action Forum, uh, the tariffs ended up costing U.S. consumers 195 billion dollars, billion with a B, 
And that led to the loss that those tariffs led to the loss of 245,000 American jobs. You may remember that particularly the agriculture sector was impacted um, to to the tune that the, the Trump administration had to, to quickly um, uh, approve $20 billion plus in subsidies for American farmers because of the losses they suffer. Basically, when we put high tariffs on China uh, and China products, the Chinese responded in kind and uh, made it hard and, and and almost impossible in a lot of cases for American ag agricultural products to get into their country. And um, trade wars don't work. Let's just say that. And that's what Trump started. Uh, another independent analysis from a group called the Tax Foundation uh, called the Trump tax tariffs, quote, one of the largest tax increases in American history. Because in effect, a tariff is something slapped on the price of a good coming in from outside of the country when it gets to the country. So let's say it's a China company that's a Chinese company that is selling a good. The Chinese company doesn't pay the tariff. The importer pays the tariff. The, imp the importer is an American company. <laughs> and so all it does is make the Chinese pr uh, product more expensive. The reason tariffs were used back in, let's say, 18th century, early 19th century, throughout the 19th century, into the 20th century, was not to raise money, but in fact to uh, give protection to American industry, whatever the industry might be, to allow it to better compete with foreign industry uh, and, and build up from inside. It can take years, decades for that to happen. And Trump's not talking about tariffs building up American manufacturing, for example, or any other industry. He's talking about it being a revenue enhancer. So he doesn't even get the part where tariffs might work right. And even then, when you say they might work, it's a concession that they might work, but they'll take a long time to get there. In the meantime, we either do without the products that are going to be that will cost too much, or we'll pay a lot more for them in the form of. Uh, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. That's and that's what we've been doing here. Uh, so now what instead of instead of learning the lesson from 2018, what Trump's been saying in campaign rallies is he would dramatically increase the tariffs on China uh, and Chinese made goods from a range of 10 to 25 percent now to 60 percent if he's elected president uh, across the board. And that combined with other proposed new tariffs in this Trump in the Trump plan, would amount, according to the Tax Foundation, to a $524 billion a year tax increase and lead to the loss of 684,000 U.S. jobs. That's what you want to vote for? I mean, maybe maybe you do. Maybe that makes you better off. If it's not your job, if you know, you're know you not someone who relies on consumer goods a lot to get through your life somehow, um, that's probably all good for you. Um, so... Uh, this is where we are, uh, and and again, that five hundred twenty four billion dollars a year, um, that's what we will end up paying. It's not something we'll pay in tax to the U.S. government. We'll just end up paying a lot more to, well, in effect, pay for China's tariffs. Um, and this is all part of a scheme by Trump to continue to give the top one uh, percent uh, a, a massive tax increase that the the, uh, the Trump tax cuts from 2017 expire next year. Uh, this will be a bone of contention for Congress, whoever's president, whoever's even in control of the House and Senate is going to be a bone of contention. According to the Tax Policy Center, uh, uh, households with incomes in the top one percent in 2025, if this is renewed, will receive an average tax cut of more than sixty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand dollars for the top one percent. For the rest of us, well, excuse me, for the bottom 60%, I, just, I shouldn't have said the bottom 99%, or in, in, uh, insinuated bottom 99%, just the bottom 60%, uh, less than $500. So um, I don't know. I imagine a lot of the folks watching this this video are probably in the middle 39%, so maybe that doesn't affect you. You're somewhere between 60000 and 500 You're closer to 500 Let's just be fair. Um but again, you're not getting you're, you're not getting those tax cuts. If you're in the upper one percent and you're watching this, man, <laughs> I, I'm surprised. <laughs> but uh, uh, in any case, um, this is the version of the top down strategy that Ronald Reagan popularized in the 1980s called trickle down economics. Except that the economics didn't trickle down too much to the rest of us. If you have any questions for me, any comments, whatever feel free to email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.